the All Pro Capital Broadcast Booth. Alongside Hans Olsen, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, so back here in Fort Worth, 15 minutes to play. TCU 41 and BYU 11. It's been 11 years since these teams last played, but Hans Olsen, this BYU-TCU game feels like most of the TCU-BYU games that they played before the rivalry broke off 11 years ago. It's all TCU. The Horned Frogs are on their way to a fifth consecutive victory over BYU if they can hang on here through the final 15. Some of this offensive rushing game for BYU just continues to slow them down, and they just can't find an answer. They tried to switch up some offensive linemen. They've given Miles Davis eight rushes. L.J. Martin found a little bit of room, but TCU is expecting the pass because BYU's got a 30-point deficit that they're trying to fight back from. So you're going to find a couple of rushing lanes here late in the game. TCU allows about 126 rushing yards per game. BYU hasn't been at 126 in any game this year. Here are the BYU rushing numbers since rushing for 112 against Sam Houston. So last four games, 46, 77, 9, and 70. Today is actually one of their best rushing days of the year at 76 yards. But still, you know, those numbers aren't going to get it done, you wouldn't think, uh, in, in a steady diet of Big 12 football over the course of this conference campaign, which still has many, many tough games ahead of the Cougars. And uh, we will note this last drive featured some promising movements on the ground, and L.J. Martin's up to 53 yards on the day. Miles Davis at 35 on the day. So the two running backs have combined for 88 on 21 carries, but as a team, BYU still sitting at 2.6 yards per rush, which isn't much better than their season average of 2.3 coming into the day. TCU has snapped 14 more plays than BYU, 66 to 52, and the Horn Frogs are averaging 7.2 yards per play to BYU's 3.9, more than doubling up the Cougars in first downs, 24 to 11, and the yardage tally also more than doubled, 474 to 201 and the question is will Josh Hoover get a 400 yard passing day in his first start in college well Josh Hoover has looked better than Chandler Morris in the games that I watched of Chandler Morris because Chandler has a real propensity to keep the ball and try to get it out of the pocket or try to rush through the middle or try to do too much himself Josh Hoover does not have that Josh is trying to get it out to his playmakers. He's divvied it out to a lot of receivers. He's getting it into the running back's hands. He's only tried to get out of the pocket one time, and the one time he did rush, he picked up 15 or 20 yards. So Hoover has done a really good job in offensive management. And the Horn Frogs are now up to 12 receivers, having caught a pass on the day. Trips left and single wide to the right, 11 personnel, and lobbing it up is Hoover down play field, and it is dropped. He had a big play made by Dylan Wright if he simply makes the pass, and he dropped it. And that would have been over 400 yards in the day for Hoover. It'll be second down and 10. Beautifully placed pass, and Hoover's got to haul that, or rather Wright's got to haul that in if you're a TCU supporter. Wright was in the man up with Jacob Robinson, and Jacob was just trailing him. But he had the step, and that was really perfectly placed. You're right, that should be a reception. Second down 10 from the TCU 32. They'll motion to trips left with Earl coming across the formation. Hoover in the gun, takes a belt high snap, looks to his right, shuffles to his left, now takes off to his right, still behind the line of scrimmage, throws on the run on the comeback. A catch made, but was he out of bounds? They say inbounds for the catch. Jalen Robinson, I thought he might have come out and come back in on the boundary, but no, it's a good catch. Well, I'll tell you what's frustrating. BYU rushes six. They bring six, which means you've got six one-on-one matchups because they were running back in to help. They didn't win any of the six, and there was too much time given to throw that ball. They're going to look at it. Here we go. The ruling on the field of a completed pass is under further review. Yeah, there was some footwork issues on the sideline. This may get confirmed. I only got one look at it, but it was close enough to have them take another look at this. Looked like it was in, but yeah. The first look I got on replay appeared to confirm the Paul call on the field. When I was calling it, I thought he might have been out of bounds. It's happening with 14:23 to play. Here in Fort Worth, BYU will head home and take on Texas Tech in the Cougars' first ever Big 12 homecoming next week. Texas Tech will be. Hosting Kansas State this evening. That, I, I don't know why they're reviewing it, Greg. I mean, it, it looked like it was After in on. Further review. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Yeah. Completed pass. First down. 
I don't know why they. The question it. was, did, did his left foot or his left heel ever hit out of bounds, and it did not on the attempt to make the catch. So they'll confirm it. By the way, in other Big 12 action happening this afternoon, Kansas leading Oklahoma State 32 to 30 in the fourth quarter. That game in Stillwater. That game and this game started at roughly the same time. First and 10 from the TCU 45. Imani Bailey takes the handoff and trying to get outside. Harrison Taggart had other ideas. Nice track down by Harrison Taggart for the tackle. Really nice job right there. You had uh, kind of a, a looping look on the outside. You're trying to hit the counter and you're trying to get a little help from your tight end, Chase Curtis. But BYU just beats him to the outside. Man, nice job by Taggart. Hoover pulls it away from the back, steps up in the pocket, and guns a fastball that's off the hands of the receiver. It would have been a first down. you got to catch that. TCU, a couple of drops on this drive. That's JoJo Earl short-arming. And that was a great throw from Hoover. Hoover's been, a, he's been changing his speeds up, but that was a heater. That <laughs> was. He put it in there tight. But like you mentioned, that is a very catchable ball. We've seen four drop passes by TCU receivers. That's the fourth. In a game they lead by 30. Yeah, and in a game that he's already got 35 completions. For 387 yards. Hoover on a third down and 10. And throws for another first down. Just sitting down. And an intermediate throw to the left side to Savion Williams. And they did it again. 11 for 15 on third downs now. Yeah, that is really frustrating too. Because that's almost like watching a pitcher come off the mound to a catcher sitting behind home plate. That's just an easy pitch and catch. And now, a little dump off to Wiley, the tight end. A little flat throw left, and they keep throwing it. 402 yards. That was pass attempt number 54 on the day. There would come a time up 30 when you could almost you know, throttle it down, run the ball a bit, but they love what they've got in Josh Hoover chucking the football today. What a day in start number one, a 400-yard, four-touchdown throwing day. He's at 35 for 54 for 407. Four touchdowns and a pick. And, and TCU's and, winning at 41 to 11. And if you think about it, he's only put that ball in trouble one time. That was the interception. Other than that, there really hasn't been an intercepted look. Hoover will throw again underneath Wiley. And on a second down and five, moves the sticks. Completion for seven. This no flag, flag down near side of the field. We'll see what, that does, what this does to the outcome of the play here. An eligible receiver downfield. Number 19 in the offense. He was covered up by another receiver. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. <laughs> well, one thing BYU did was never do it twice in a game. Yeah. Okay? TCU was, done it twice today. Was this like a national note that went out to every official? Like, hey, this Watch year this. we will absolutely crack down on covered-up receivers because you know, we've called that. This is, what, the sixth time, seventh time we've called that this year? Number 19 was the one who caught the pass. Therefore, that's illegal touching. It's a five-yard penalty and a loss of down. Now, BYU's Third seen down. that. In fact, every time it happened, it was that play. It was almost exactly, and that's yep. the tight end. Yep. So, loss of down, second down. Make it third down and 10 back at the 40-yard line of BYU. Third downs, 11 for 15 today for TCU. It's third and 10. Hoover, clean pocket. And guns one into traffic and intercepted. BYU with the pick. The second one thrown by Hoover today. And it's Siale Esera, the freshman linebacker. Really on the field. There's an interception. Media timeout. Siale gets in the stat sheet off a batted ball. The freshman from Temp View. Siale Esera is just going to continue to fall back into his zone. Look, fall back, fall back, fall back. As that ball gets tipped. He just scoops his hands underneath it, kind of falls over the pile, and comes up with it. Nice job by Siale. We'll take a break. BYU gets the ball back. 12-20 to play. BYU's down 41-11 to on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. Let's head live to the All-Pro Capital broadcast booth. Alongside Hans Olsen, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Just before the break, first career interception for the freshman linebacker Siale Esera. We'll call that our new skin. Beautiful catch of the game. Had to follow the bouncing ball. Did Siale 
It's brought to you by New Skin. Discover the best you. The beautiful catch of the game is a defensive catch. An interception by Ciale Esera. Good to see. BYU gets the ball back. Down 30, 41 to 11. 12 20 to go. Stranger things have happened in the game of college football. We'll see what the Cougs can do here with some good fortune. Been interesting with Caden Slovis just looking at ever since that fumble, it was ruled a fumble. It looked like it might have been forward motion on Caden Slovis, but a corner blitz, the corner gets there and kind of grabs the ball as he's trying to throw it and rips it out of his hands. And ever since then, you've seen Keaton kind of warming up the shoulder and shaking that thing out. And some and what, of his passes have been what, delayed. And what we see when we were in the commercial break now? Yeah, and he was just sitting down there trying to warm it up just before they came out to take the huddle. And I, I think you saw him give the thumbs up, and he's going to come out and, and give it a shot. But it, it feels like that did slow him down. Let's also note that Kingsley Suamata'i is back in the game at left tackle, which puts Kime back at right tackle. Kingsley left for a spell. A short time ago. Kingsley just hit himself in the head. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Eden Slovis takes a thigh-high snap. We'll pump it to his right and dump it off underneath. And catch made by Keelan Marion for a short gain on the first down and 10. From the BYU 22 with 12 minutes and 10 seconds to play. Jamoy Hodge, the tackle of Marion. Not nearly a sellout, but a pretty big number. Not a lot of fans still in the stands now at this point, but 44, 599 is the official crowd number here today at Amon G. Carter Stadium. Renewal of a rivalry that goes from WAC to Mountain West to now Big 12. TCU's keeping three guys deep. They're just keeping three guys over the top at all times trying to keep everything in front of them. Horn Frogs will drop eight. Slovis will lob it toward the sounder, a sideline and go to Cody Epps. Couldn't haul it in on the boundary. Little back shoulder look for Cody. It goes incomplete. Third down and nine. BYU's third down number is two for 12 today. You know, the third and nine from their own 23 yard line. Clock stopping at 11.36 to play. This game is already three hours old, and we have still about another half hour of football left to play in real time. Then TCU goes to a single high safety. And gets a little bit more aggressive on the press. So it's, it's not like they're going to go all prevent all the time. They actually pressed that time. The play before, they were keeping some soft defense. Third down nine. Slovis in the gun. Settle. Fire far side. Pass breakup. Intended for Parker Kingston. Pass interference. DB got there early. Cannot believe he got called for the flag. But it flies late. Ish, Ish Burdine interfering with Parker Kingston on that. Far sideline pass to be P.I. Pass interference. Defense, number 18. The spot foul, automatic first down. There wasn't as much there as there was with the Chase no. Roberts play earlier. No. The Chase Roberts play went unflagged. Yeah, not even close. Chase was actually hit in the back and pushed into the pass. This was actually a good pass break up on the ball arrival. That's not a great call, actually. Maybe it's a makeup. Because Kalani did chew the officials for a good long time. First and 10 now at the BYU 32. First down by Pendley. A running play to Miles Davis for maybe a yard, if that. Not much there. 11.20 to play. Clock rolling. So BYU down 30. The worst loss of the Kalani Sitake era was a 34-point loss to Wisconsin back in 2017. That was a tough year. It was a non-bowl year for BYU. The only non-bowl year for Kalani. BYU lost 40-6, to six, a 34-point margin of defeat. That's the worst loss in the Sitake era. Chase Roberts hauls in a nice down and out to the left side. First down gainer, and BYU driving it. TCU brought a five-man pressure that time. Trying to get a little bit of pressure, and Chase Roberts found, him, found himself in a man situation. Nice break to the sideline to get open. First and ten at the... BYU 44-yard line. Give to Davis. Davis takes a shoulder check. Knocks him down at the 45 of TCU. Move the sticks. 10-yard run. BYU is going to end up with its uh, second-best rushing day of the season. It came in the season opener against Southern Utah. BYU ran against Sam Houston. Pardon me. BYU ran for 112 yards that day. Slovis, clean pocket. Bouncing on the balls of his feet. We'll throw it into the team area of BYU out of, way, uh, out of bounds. Throw away. We'll create a second down and 10. 
BYU's run the ball for 88 yards today. Cooks have only one 100-yard day on the year. It was in that Sam Houston opener, 112 yards, so second-best rushing day of the year coming in this game. The last two opponents to face TCU both ran for two bills plus, so you could run on this team. Not a great script game for BYU for running the football, but there they are at 88. The yards per carry number 2.8, which isn't great, but better than average for BYU. 10-12 to play. You're in quarter number four, second and ten for BYU with the TCU 45. Shotgun snap, Slovis. Dump off to LJ. Left side, LJ Martin. Stiff arm, LJ Martin knocked down, shoved out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Gain of four, third and six coming up for BYU. BYU football brought to you in part by Bam Bam's Barbecue. Perfectly smoking each cut of meat just for you. Come in and enjoy Central Texas Barbecue right there in Provo. Bam Bam's Barbecue, authentic to the bone. Third and seven. Parker Kingston will motion the Twins right. Hill and Kingston there. Rex and Lasseter left side, the short side for Slovis. Slovis and the Cougs going right to left as we see it and you hear it. L.J. Martin, the tailback on the third and seven. Keaton sees the pocket collapse, dumps it off underneath to Lasseter. Lasseter makes a hurdle and dives. Come not come up to the line to gain. It'll be short. BYU will be fourth down. And one would presume the Cougars keep the offense on the field. Why not? You're down 30. So the offense will stay on the field. Fourth and four. So BYU's third down number goes to two for 13 on the day. On a day that TCU goes 11 for 16. Ooh. Wow. High third down efficiency by TCU today. So fourth down and four. We're under nine to go. Trips left. Shotgun snap coming from Connor Pay to Keaton Slovis. Belt high snap. Quick fire to the right. Catch made by LJ Martin. And he will not get the line to gain. He's stepped a yard short. And BYU will turn the ball over on downs. Trailing it 41 to 11. Good job by TC's defense. They're just going to stand at the sticks. They've got five guys that are one yard behind that first down marker. Every one of them is targeting anybody that comes into that territory. And it was dropped underneath. And that's an easy tackle by two guys just to stop that fourth down. TCU's offense back out on the field after this. 41-11 to Horn Frogs on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You're listening to BYU Football on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Here's Jason Shepard with a scoreboard update. Pretty good game going on in Stillwater, Oklahoma State, and number 23, Kansas, battling back and forth. Fourth quarter action, two and a half minutes to go. Cowboys up 36 to 32, and a matchup in Seattle between Washington and Oregon back and forth as well. It is 33-29 in favor of the Ducks in the fourth. Back out to Fort Worth and Greg Rubel. Hey, thank you, Jason. Cougar fans, when you download the Smiths app, you have easy access to savings every day. Get the most out of weekly sales, personalized coupons, and your favorite items all while earning one fuel point for every dollar spent. Download the Smiths app now and start saving big. TCU winning big. 41-11 to 11 our score. 844 to play here at Amon G. Carter Stadium, Port Worth, Texas. Josh Hoover's had a heck of a debut. 35 for 55, 407, four touchdowns. Yes, a couple of picks. And BYU hasn't gotten to Hoover. How about this? Zero sacks and one TFL. And this is for a BYU team coming into the game. Hands ranked 112th nationally in both sacks and TFLs. It's just not been a get-into-the-backfield kind of season for BYU. And Hoover's gotten rid of it fast. He's done a fantastic job tonight managing this game. Hoover. Handoff. Nope. It's an end-around handoff. Thought it was battle. Instead, it's the other uh, direction. Say a Jalen Robinson nudged out of bounds once he got to the boundary and got a nice gain of 11. Moved the sticks. A first down run for Jalen Robinson on the end-around. He was able to catch the corner and worked his way up for 11 yards. That could have been holding on A.J. Bompachon. Uh, A.J. was trying to get off that block, and he was just getting held a little bit as that thing reached to the outside. Chica Ebunoha with the force out for BYU. Chica's now in the game as the Cougs go to their deep down their defensive bench. First and 10, 47 yard line of TCU. Hoover will throw. And on the seam, is it dropped or is it caught at the 30 yard line? It's a catch. That's a catch made of DJ Rogers with his second catch of the year, the tight end. A really well thrown ball. 
And I had to wait to see if Rodgers came up with it as he went to ground because it's that now the Horn Frogs are going away from us. We're in one end zone. They're going away to the other end zone. Trenton Battle takes the handoff middle on a first and ten for almost no gain. Well, and Josh it. Hoover has now thrown the ball 57 times. 37 for 57 for 439. Four touchdowns and a couple of picks. Even with the two picks, his pass efficiency rating is 145.7. Keaton Slovis having a rough day at the other side. 14 for 30, took a shoulder hit, 145 yards, no touchdowns, and a pick. So a day without a touchdown pass for a guy who's got 78 of them in his collegiate career. Josh Hoover and Gunn on second down and 10. Give Trey Sanders a run between the tackles. And not much there. It'll be a third down and long. Trey Sanders was a short distance and goal line phenomenon before this game. He'd had four touchdowns. He doesn't have the rushing numbers that Bailey has, but he's got double the touchdowns coming into this game that Bailey had had. It's been an interesting, quiet night for Imani Bailey. I thought that this would be... 100 plus yard game for Bailey and a Bailey might wrap up the night with what 60 61 yards on 13 carries 4.7 yards per carry third down and eight and that'll be an incomplete pass and for only the sixth time today TCU has failed to convert a third down so it'll be a 46 yard field goal try for Griffin Kell to make it 44 to 11 Warren Thompson decided he made a business decision. Mm. He said, you know, I'm, I could reach up for this, but I might give up my ribs for the rest of my life, so I'm going to tuck my arms down and give up this, this reception. Jordy Sandy, the punter, will hold. High snap. Kell swings the leg and sends it through for three. 46-yarder to make it 44 to 11. Timeout on the field. TCU's leads now 33 with 618 to play on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. You in the Big 12 plays here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Well, days like today are few and far between in the Kalani Sitaka era. Not too many big losses like this, uh, 20 points or more. BYU hasn't lost the game yet, but they're down 33, 44 to 11 with 618 to play. Uh, these are the, the losses by, by 20 plus. In the Kalani era, the the worst one, uh, 34, the margin of defeat against Wisconsin back in 2017. That was a 40 to six game. Lost to LSU by 27. Lost to Mississippi State by 25 that year. Also some big losses that year. Washington 28, USU 25. Go to 2019, Washington 26. And then uh, just last season, Liberty beat BYU by 27. It's also a 21-point loss to Oregon last year. But uh, yeah, days like today don't come around all that frequently for Kalani in now eight seasons of coaching. But TCU's gotten after BYU pretty handily today by 33, the lead right now. Well, as TCU kicks off with Griffin Kell sending it back to Nyberg and Marion. As you've mentioned multiple times today too, Greg, it could be worse. TCU's had some self-inflicted penalties and some dropped passes and some really weird play calls and a third and a half yard and a fourth and one. They have have two picks thrown and a turnover on downs. The Horned Frogs do. Touchback. It'll come out to the 25. This game brought to you by Siegfried and Jensen. Siegfried and Jensen has been helping Utah families for over 30 years. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. So BYU will likely drop to 4 and 2 through 6 games, 6 of 12 regular season games. They'd be 1 and 2 in the Big 12. And you're trying to get to 6, want to get yourself to the postseason and BYU has to find two wins in 6 games down the stretch. It's frustrating to come out of a bye week like this too because things aren't going to get easier. You know, they still got Texas and Oklahoma in front of them. And the TCU had lost back-to-back Big 12 games. You thought this could be a win for them. Got Texas Tech next week. That's a run to L.J. Martin. Now the question becomes, and you look at secondary concerns now, can BYU get at least 100 yards rushing? BYU was at 88 yards coming into this drive. And that's a three-yard gain for 91 on the day. So BYU's not going to win this game, but might give themselves just a little glimmer of hope. 
that the run game might be in for some improvement. Empty for Slovis on second down seven here. He'll throw underneath to Cody Epps. Makes the catch to move the sticks. Needed to get seven and got seven. It would be nice to see here just in this final couple drives if they get one, maybe two, just to see if you can spark Cody Epps a little bit because moving forward, Greg, you're going to have to have some of his dynamic creative ability. Clock's at 5-10 and rolling. TCU is going to beat BYU for a fifth straight time. And a lot of those games were blowouts. And now they go to a 7-5 all-time advantage over BYU. Yep. Including 4-2 and two here in Fort Worth. And BYU, all kinds of formation issues. They have to call a timeout First down 33. Charge. Time of the half. BYU. Media timeout. They, they ran Cody Epps off the field, and they're bringing on a new receiver set, and they just couldn't get themselves into position. And rather than take any type of illegal formation or run a mis- misplay, they take the timeout, see if they can get themselves reset. So we'll take that timeout and reset for ourselves here in Fort Worth. 4.49 to play. TCU 44, BYU 11 on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's head live to the All-Pro Capital broadcast booth. Alongside Hans Olsen, here's the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Tenth time in the Kalani Shitake era that BYU's allowed 40 or more in a game. It's the sixth most, most points scored against BYU under Kalani. 44 to 11. TCU leading BYU 449 to play. The games in which BYU's given up more than 44. 53 by Toledo in 2016. 45 by Utah State in 2018, 45 by Washington in 2019, 49 by Virginia in a win in 2021, 52 by Arkansas last year in Provo. TCU will go to 4-3. And And since opening up 12-0 last year, they will have gone 5-5 in their next 10 games. I still think that your bowl eligibility is a big-time possibility for BYU. <laughs> this is going to be a tough film session for this team. There were so many miscues, and they're going to get chewed out, I'm sure, quite a bit. And up front, I thought TCU defensively did a really good job of being aggressive in the gaps. So they're going to have to learn from this film, and I still think that bowl eligibility and really seven wins is possible for BYU. Got to get at least two in the next six to play in the postseason. Texas Tech, Texas, West Virginia, Iowa State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State still to come. Slovis in an empty formation. Takes an knee-high snap. The right-hander throws over the head of the intended receiver, Darius Lassiter, incomplete. That was a deep in. It's about wide 20 open. yards down the field, and it was there. And Keaton hasn't had the accuracy. And Again, whether or not that shoulder is a factor, I think you'd have to acknowledge that it's probably something to do with the fact that Keaton is a 47% passer today. Yeah, that was a wide open route. It was nice. Lassiter just sifted through that press and found a nice open seam, and that ball just goes over his head. Slovis had touchdown passes and all but the Sam Houston opener this year. No touchdown passes today. Josh Hoover, four of them for TCU. Second and ten. And Slovis throws incomplete. Keelan Marion has a pass broken up on the down and in. TCU continues to just rush three, and they're keeping eight guys back to defend these passes, and they're they're playing primarily zone. Uh, I'm seeing some some press in the middle or some man in the middle, but they're just really playing zone concepts and keeping one safety over the top. BYU third and ten. The Cougs are two for thirteen on third downs today. Just two third down conversions for the afternoon. 4.36 to go. BYU down 33. Slovis, shotgun, empty formation, trips to the right, two wides left. Slovis will look right, throw right, and oh my goodness. Darius Lassiter drops it. He had it in his hands, just couldn't bring it in. That was going to be a first down. Fourth down and 10. And the punt team looks ready to come on. Keaton Slovis wants to keep the offense on the field. They'll punt it away and... 
KCU can go into four-minute mode and try and finish this game with the football. Darius Lassiter in a spread trips look. He was the middle receiver in the spread trips look. He's going to take two steps up field, take a shift, and then go to a heavy slant inside. And that ball hit him on stride perfectly in the hands, and he dropped it. There wasn't a defender within three yards of him. Rico, what? That's a weird punt. It's actually got some good distance to it, but it was a, a side spinner off his foot. It was a different look. That was a line drive. It was, it's, a, it's a long punt. It ends up being down to the five, but coming off his foot, it looked like it was going to leave maybe 10, 20 feet off the ground. That was a punt pass is what that was. It was, it was like he was trying to throw a, a deep out. <laughs> Not a funny look off his foot? Absolutely. It just spiraled and stayed low. And he, he, he's been off on the punt a little bit today. Hasn't he, been he will not thing. complain about the end result. That's no. a nice long punt down to the five yard line. But uh, I mean, maybe he wanted some funny, funny it, kicks for for Ryan today. That's a sixty yard punt after the roll. You know, now down, that I, down to the TCU five yard line. I'm looking at the Texas flag and it's blowing pretty good across the field. Did he try to keep it under the wind? Maybe I, it, I don't know. He, he was. It was a uh, yeah. He, it was a stinger. <laughs> he, kicked, he kicked a stinger. A new quarterback for TCU. Josh Hoover's day is done. And that's Grant Tisdale, the former Ole Miss and Southeast Louisiana quarterback, getting into his first action of the season. So Josh Hoover's day ends at 37 for 58, 439, four touchdowns and two picks. By the way, BYU's third down number on that last Thursday, uh, third down drop, uh, two for 14. That's a season low in third down conversions on the second most attempts on third down for the year. So a season worst third down outing for BYU today. Second and eight on the gain of two by Tisdale. The handoff to Cam Cook. Cam Cook turns the corner, has a first down. And more out past the 20-yard line, 23-yard line. First and 10 TCU. And the clock rolling to 3.30. TCU should be draining clock, but it's not really in their nature. But there are probably a couple first downs away from sealing this deal and getting into kneel down territory. Well, you got some other defenders out there. You got Bodie Schoonover, who's playing off the defensive end. You got, is that John Henry Daly? It is. You got John Michael Henry Daly, Daly didn't come, but Brother John Henry did. That, now, that's a guy that I'm paying really close attention to. Before, before that guy took off for his mission, he's one of the more dynamic high school pass rushers Lone in peak, right? high school history. Yes, coached by former D end Ryan Denny. And now, in a quarterback, Luke Pardee for TCU. 245 at a gain of two on the handoff. We'll call those personnel moves our Bailey's moves of the game. Brought to you by Bailey's Moving and Storage. We move with you every step of the way since 1952. A lot of personnel moves late on defense for BYU in this one. TCU is going to win it by a final score of 44 to 11, it would appear. Unless BYU gets the ball back and has a chance to do something late, late, late. 225 to go, second and eight again. TCU is maybe one first down away from getting to kneel this one out. Second and eight at the TCU 25. Pardee at quarterback. Gives to Cook. Cook stiff arms Taggart. Gets to the boundary. And did he get the first down? He got very close to the line to gain short by a yard. But he got out of bounds with the ball. The clock will stop. And then they'll start winding it. TCU still. Outwound at 2.08. TCU still, still fighting for every yard. You've got David Latu who's hanging out in the middle. you got Joshua Singh. The guy that we haven't had a chance to see or talk a lot about. He's playing in the defensive tackle spot. So you got a lot of new bodies out there. TCU third and two. If they convert here, they can kneel down, presuming BYU won't call timeouts and end this game. Tisdale back in at quarterback now as they platoon at backup QB. Little flip left side, first down, and that'll be a conversion to DJ Rogers on third and two. So TCU's final third down gets converted. They go to 12 for 18. 67% on third downs on a day that BYU goes 2 for 14 on third downs. I can't imagine BYU calling a timeout. TCU can kneel this one out. BYU went 14%. TCU went 67%. So first and 10 from the TCU 39. Under two minutes to go. The clock did stop on the first down with under two minutes to go. Tisdale. And off middle to Brandt Affinger. And Affinger, a short run. BYU player had his helmet come off. And will they stop the clock for that? I'll just let it run to fix it. He'll have to leave the game for a play. And that's... I'm not sure which player had his helmet knocked off there. Going off. Was that 
Is that? Hmm. It's not Talbot. No. no. <laughs> no that. 105 to go. Clock is rolling. It's going to be inconsequential. Second down nine for TCU. They're going to let this clock wind down. They can kneel at this point. Marcus McKenzie out there to finish at the corner position. TCU can take a knee here and end the game. Play clock's at 15, game clock's at 46. If they're smart, it doesn't matter, smart or not, a knee ends the game here. But they're in a typical run formation. Tisdale will take the handoff, or take the snap, give the ball to Cook. Cook will run, and that will do it. Game is over. No more snaps need to be made. BYU won't stop the clock. Final score will be 44-11. to 11. TCU defeating BYU. Players are lining up, but there shouldn't be another snap in this game. And... There certainly will not be. There's no t- yet. Yeah, TCU's lining up. Yeah, they are. What are they doing here? Third down and four with five seconds to go, and they're going to snap a play and get a guy a handoff. Maybe he wouldn't have gotten other way. So Franklin Estrada gets in the game and takes the handoff to end the game and run left, and that'll do it. So they did run one more play to get somebody a touch, and we'll take a break. Forty-four to eleven. Final score. TCU wins it on the new skin. BYU Sports Network. You had the game all but uh, kind of wrapped up. Felt like early in this one. Second half, third quarter went to the Horn Frogs 10 to 3. Fourth quarter to the Horn Frogs 3 nothing. They scored in all four quarters. BYU scores eight in the second, three in the third. Shut out in the first and the fourth. 44 to 11 is your final as BYU loses by 30 points in this one. The second largest margin of defeat in the Kalani Sitake era. Only the 40-6 loss to Wisconsin back in 2017 had a larger margin of defeat. 44-11 is the final in TCU's favor. Let's get you some final numbers of note. TCU outgains BYU more than 2-1. 584-243. to Another game under 300 yards for BYU. The Cougs did not get to 100 yards rushing. They end up at 91 on the day. First downs doubled up. 30-15. to Plays 20 more for TCU, 86 to 66, despite the fact that possession time was nearly equal in this game. Yards per play, almost 2 to 1, 6.8 to 3.7. Red zone, BYU 2 for 3, TCU 4 for 5. BYU is now 18 for 20 on the year in red zones. Turnovers were even today, two apiece. Hands, your thoughts. It's one of uh, Keaton Slovis' tougher games. He was f- 15 for 34, 44% passing. 152, no touchdowns and a pick. And too many overthrows, too many missed throws. Uh, He was delayed in throwing the ball even to start the game, kind of slow decision-making before the forced fumble even happened. That looked like it might have been a forward pass, but they did rule it a fumble, and it looked like at that point he may have hurt his arm. But even before that, there were some delayed decision-makings. The ball was coming out slow. He was getting hit as he was throwing it. So kind of a tougher day for Keaton Slovis. I talked about the wide receivers needing to get off the press and get that separation. That took a while. That didn't that didn't happen as often as that needed to happen because it felt like the felt like the routes were jammed up pretty well, Greg. Felt like they were pretty flustered on the outside. So BYU falls to four and two, one and two in the Big Twelve. TCU goes to four and three, two and two in the Big Twelve. More postgame coverage coming up from Fort Worth after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network.